Let's jump into it. NBA Finals. Who do you have in these finals and why? Uh, I picked the Celtics. I picked the Celtics to win the championship before. I said it before. I said Dallas was going to make this final, and I said the Celtics was going to be there, and I said the Celtics were going to win the championship. As much as I hate to say it because I'm a Heat fan, um, they're going to hang their banner. They're going to hang it this year. Um, the matchups. Basketball is all about matchups. I told you that before. Minnesota and Dallas was a bad matchup for Minnesota was a bad matchup for Dallas. Or Dallas was a bad matchup for Minnesota because they were able to put Luka in the pick and roll situations all day against Gobert and they how they guarded it. They trailed him and he put the guy on his hip, McDaniels or Edwards, and then they just threw lobs and he did whatever the heck he wanted to do. Now when it comes to this Boston series, it's not so much that way just because of Porzingis coming back in his length. So in that situation with the pick and roll, I think the Celtics will stay home a little bit more on the outside. People won't let everybody else do what they want to do. They won't switch it because the switches are just too convenient for Luka, but they will probably blitz him a little bit more and uh, make other guys beat them or try to. But it's a whole different series, a whole different ballpark in this series. Um, with Porzingis on the court stretching the floor, that's a big thing for Dallas. Dallas was able to have Gafford and um, lively, just stay around the basket when they guard it go there. But now when you guard the Boston, who have a five-out offense the whole game, they got Porzingis starting at the top of the key, they, or they have Horford out there, and they stretch the floor the way they do. They just need so much space to create one-on-one with the other guys to do what they want to do, and they're still going to drive and kick and hit threes, and that's just what they do. So that's just a big difference in this series with Gafford and Lively not being able to be those guys that they were in the last series because they were able to stay home around go there. Um, it's just totally a different series, a totally different beast that they're going to get, going against this series. Um, I like I like Boston in five. I have to agree with that one. I muted, I muted myself. My bad. I have to agree there. I actually have Boston in five as well. Um, yeah, the Boston Celtics are the best team in the NBA this year. Top of my uh, you know. Talent wise, they, they have the most talent. They are deep. They can score uh, at will, you know. And just, I mean, off of this game alone, it's gotten a little bit closer. It's an 18 point game now in the third. It was up at like 29 in the second, second quarter. And obviously, every game gets a little bit closer in today's NBA. Um, but of course, you're watching Luka Doncic do a lot of crying in the first half, which is typical of him. And. <clears throat> But Porzingis in the first half has been absolutely fantastic. You know, he has hit some shots. There's like, what? <laughs> you know, he, he's hitting some shots. And uh, he's definitely made an impact immediately in this series. You know, it, it is. <clears throat> people are making this. I keep listening to all these guys on television talking about Kyrie and Luka, Luka and Kyrie. And I'm like, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are pretty damn good. As much as you don't like Tatum. He's like, still a good player. You just don't like, like top yeah, three, like top they're, five player. Yeah, they're and Kyrie's not a top twenty player. So until now, you know he hasn't been a top twenty player all season. Did he even make the All Star team this year? No. I don't even remember. You know, and <clears throat> I still think Luca is massively deficient defensively, and you saw that in the first half. They can't stop a parked car when those guys can go. I mean, those guys can go. And you add Porzingis back into the lineup. And I think they would have won the series regardless of Porzingis. But with Porzingis, it, it yanks those guys, those bigs away from the rim. They got a guard. I mean, I watched Porzingis blow right by um, Lively, I think it was, for a dunk in the first half. You, got, you just removed the shot blocker. So, um, yeah, I think the Celtics are going to win this series rather easily. The uh, question now becomes, if the Celtics win the series, and Jalen Brown is the MVP, what does that say about Jason Tatum? That doesn't say anything about Jason Tatum. Really. We already know that, that Brown is an elite player. He's a star in this league. He's good. We both think that Jalen Brown is, if not better, is definitely equal to Jason Tatum when it comes to regards of putting the ball in the basket or just being a good all-around player because he does it on both sides. So it won't be nothing against Tatum. Steph Curry, he didn't win the first MVP. He didn't win the second or the third. He won the fourth one. So 
he we still regard Steph Curry as a top five, top ten player. Well, well, at that moment, he was a top three player in the league. But I'm saying he was a top ten player overall in history. We still considered him that, or he was coming towards that, even with him not winning the MVP. We knew what he brought to the table and the type of player he was. I think that's the same thing with Taylor. We know the type of player he is, that he's good. We just don't think that he's top five good. He's top 12 good to me, top 12, top 14, around that area. And I think Brown is around that same area also. So if he don't win it, or even Brown might not win it, or come up how they're looking right now, Porzingis could win the MVP if he continues it on when they go to the road. You know, the home games are, everybody's a little bit more comfortable, especially game one when you're feeling good about yourself, you're up big, you're shooting any kind of shot and it's going in. Now, when it comes to later on in the series, when people make a little bit of adjustments, we'll see how good Porzingis still is or how good everybody else around them still are. But they have an overall good team. You have Drew Holiday is their fourth or fifth best player. Well, he's easily a two or three best player on any other team, any roster. So when you have that type of, you know, lineup, because Derek White could be the fourth best player or third best player on the team any given night also. So when you have that type of roster, which you're starting five, they're just going to be top, tough to beat, man. They're, they're it's, it's amazing the lineup that they put out there and how they can stretch the court. And it's just going to be a tough matchup for the Mavericks to even be in this series or make it a game. Luka, Luka will literally have to do what D-Wade did against the Mavericks back in 07 or 06. He will have to have one of those series where he's just going nuclear. And Kyrie will have to join him like he joined LeBron in 2016, whatever year that was when he came back from 3-1. So he was giving him about 32, 33 points, 40-point nights you know, as a second man on the roster. So if they don't have that type of nuclear threat from those two in this series, then it's, they have no chance. They literally have no chance. Um, maybe Tim Hardaway comes off the bench and gets back in the lineup because he could score the ball. He's been that type of player, but he's been so far down the bench um, <laughs> the past for the whole playoffs that I don't know what happened to him. But that's the type of X factor that they kind of need to come in and give him a spark. So, so right right now it's sixty eight fifty two with seven twenty five to go in the third. Um, Tatum has eight points. Well, he's gonna have to start scoring because we we know that this team is they're prone to start taking bad shots and letting other teams get back in the game. Look like you know Dallas is getting back in the game right now. They're down fourteen. So that's the thing with Boston, man. They they. They get up so much on you and they play so good and then they go through these laws. They start taking bad shots. Tatum start taking step back threes, step back threes. Everybody start voicing them instead of start driving and getting the good shots that they were getting all whole game. Going to Porzingis on the block sometimes with his mismatches and get an easy two points sometimes. And that's their problem. You know, they're prone for them home games every once in a while to look really sad and pathetic there at, on their home court. But then they'll, then they'll go on the road and they'll win every game. So, um, well, well, I mean, he needs to shoot the ball, actually, because he's not even shooting the ball right now. He's only taking eight shots. Don't, don't uh, need to right now. But yeah. But, so, so remember how uh, national media was talking about, well, you don't want to poke the bear. Don't want to poke the bear. You know, Kyrie Irving. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Be correct. <laughs> Kyrie hasn't won like the last ten games against Boston. You know he got swept. Um, so I don't know why they're making this whole scene like Boston don't have a kind of a formula on how to guard him. I, I don't know if he averaged that series, but I'm pretty sure he didn't shoot over forty percent in that playoff series when he was with Brooklyn. Because nobody shot good that series. So um, I, I think Boston have a pretty good clue of how to deal with him. Yeah, he's uh he I know he struggled a great deal versus the Celtics since he left the Celtics. Um yeah, but uh, so, so you have Mavericks in five. No, no. Mavericks no. in six? Celtics. I'm sorry, Celtics in five. Celtics. No, you want me to pick against, against you, but I'm not doing it. Celtics time. in five. I have Celtics in five. I think they're going to wipe these guys out. It wouldn't shock me if it was a sweep. Um, you know, I you have a situation here where Tatum's not even playing well tonight and they're up by 14. Could it get closer? I guess it could. I don't think the Celtics are going to lose this game. They're going to. They always have their lulls, and then they go back on 10 to 12 point runs, and next thing you know, it's a 25 point game again. Um, that being said, thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.